Peace and greetings, beautiful people. What's good? And now I'm sing songy here because I'm excited to have created some type of setup and get back into the rhythm. So I did get the Tarot de la Ville. Uh, I got this off of collecttarot.com. Uh, they're super great here. So this deck has been on and off, on and off my wish list for God even knows how long at this point. And I was just like debating on it because it's a little bit different than um, your typical than your typical um, like Marseille style deck is definitely different. As you can see, I still don't have everything completely set up. I don't have my scissors. <laughs> I'm gonna use nail stuff. But anyways, so let's go ahead and unbox this. So this is the um, deck that comes with the book. I don't know how extensive the book is, but we will take a look at it. This is just an unboxing, not a review. So boom. So here's the book. And it's the cards. Awesome. Let's move this to the side real fast. So quick look at the book. It is all in English, so that's good. Um okay, it looks like this is the first edition. And let's see what it says right here. Why choose the Jacques Leville tarot? What does that have to say? Uh, can a significant interpretation of the minor arcana be given with the modern tarot cards that we have today? The answer seems to be no, since the majority of people who practice tarot readings use only the 22 major arcana. Then what can be the reason for the loss of interest in the 56 minor arcana? Quite simply, a loss of meaning. If you compare carefully contemporary tarot cards with those of Jacques Verville, the difference is striking. Modern cards have deleted most of the details that contribute to the richness of old cards. The result is that we are left with schematically or schematic stripped arcana that have become indecipherable. Hence, it can be said that the minor arcana of modern tarot are sterile. And it's not the case with the Verville. Uh, here, a wide variety of details give a coherent whole that can be understood if the keys for understanding and decryption are applied. So the arcana then actually mean something. They become alive. That's interesting. Um, honestly, it wasn't the minor arcana cards in this deck that actually made me feel like intrigued about the deck. It more had to do, it more so had to do with the... Um, with the major arcana cards but we'll take a look at it oh my god this is the first friday in months since 31 days of tarot of this year that i've been able to sit down and feel normal and do a reading or not do a reading but like mess with my cards like just enjoy my time you know so this is the box it is a tuck box Okay. And let's see if I can actually get this open without breaking the It's the only way to get tub boxes open without ripping it. So use it use something flat like a like a knife or something. Okay, the cards here we go. Alright. So they seem like standard. Uh, standard size, just like a right away Smith, um, except the edges are sharp, which is typical in most Marseille decks um, or TDM decks, as I like to call them. So let's see. All right. So I'm guessing this is how. Let me bring this in a little bit closer. Okay. So then we just have a little title card. It says the Jacques Beville Tarot made in Paris circa 1650 and conserved in the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. 
is a rare example of a complete tarot deck of the uh, 10, 15, 16, the 17th century. Uh, Henry Rene, I cannot pronounce his name. Playing cards, tells us that Jacques Viville was a master card maker who was active in Paris between the years of 1643 and 1664. This reproduction represents the colors, dimensions, and proportions, and all the details of the original. Okay, now, we have another one looks like it's saying the same thing all right so he here we go so here we have the full now it's interesting right off the right right in the beginning it's interesting because the full in most tarot de marseille decks face to the right this one, even though it's standard and profile has a little dog, he has the bag and all that stuff, he's actually facing to the left, which is very common in the um, Rider Waite Smith deck. So I find that interesting. So this definitely goes, oh, oh these are not even in order. Okay, and now it's gonna make me nuts. <laughs> Give me a chance to put them in order so that I have a stream of consciousness with the cards, just one moment. Actually, it wasn't that it wasn't that serious so actually what happens in Marseille decks a lot of times is they put the full at the back of the major arcana instead of in the beginning like how we would get it unboxed for um, any right away Smith deck so I just went ahead and fix that real fast all right here we have the magician so we still have the standard like situation with the table and the three legs and all that kind of stuff but the perspective is again facing to the left as opposed to the right which is which is kind of so this would not detract me from using this, this deck is actually very intriguing it's almost like um a lot of things are made for right-handed people in life if you're a left-handed person you may be aware of this and you, you just learn to adapt, right? So I almost feel like this is what somebody would be like an attempt to make so far at this point, like a left-handed type of deck. And I'm not talking about the left-hand path and in that theory or, or that um, matter of fact, I'm being very like literal when I say, you know, left-handed left-handed things and right-handed things are just a little bit different and lefties have to learn to adapt because there's more right-handed people in the world than there are lefties just I am a left-handed person so I'm aware of these things okay so moving on let's go ahead and flip these so that we don't get distracted here all right the priestess is not straightforward She's not as straightforward um, or centered. She's tilted off to the right a little bit. Um, there's something about the messiness of the colors. This is what I really like, the uh, Marsiglia Svera. Svera. Um, I like about it is that the ink quality is just, it's like over the lines. There's something about that that brings a unique feel. Here we have the Empress. She's straightforward as opposed to... Um, being tilted a little bit i may have to do a comparison to like either the dodal or convert type deck just so you guys can if you're not familiar with tarot de marseille you can kind of see a little bit more of what is very intriguing about this specific tarot de marseille style deck you know what i mean okay the emperor is in his typical position so i'm cool with that and notice and Tarot de Marseille decks as well. The numbers, the the Roman numerals, they add up. It's not like, um, you know, one slash and a V, which would be five minus one is four. It, it there's a progression, as opposed to um, a subtraction. Here's the hierophant. Okay. 
The lovers. And I'm trying to remember if this is if this one is like style one or or style two with the cupid. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to do some Marseille base decks. So uh, justice, chariot. Little people faces instead of like sphinxes or more horsey faces. That's very interesting. Strength. Now, this strength card. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> what is happening here? So, this strength card is very interesting. This looks like almost like a battle royale. Like you can't get your cat to like take their medicine or something like that. The paws are like, like out, like very scrappy. And on top of that, I don't think I've ever seen in any Marseille deck ever, this is making me chuckle, is the foot coming out of the clothing, like barefoot, like no shoes, there's like toes and everything. This is really interesting. Um, I think this sticks out to me because this year for me has been um an eight year and that would be either the strength card or the justice card i chose to acknowledge them both and my year has definitely been a balancing act a juggling act i've had to have physical strength mental strength emotional strength it's been a lot and i'll talk about that in a separate video <laughs> so the barefoot thing is kind of making me chuckle internally right now here's the wheel of fortune there's a very almost Picasso-esque thing going on in this particular card. Um, all the elements are there, but they, they're just off proportion, you know? It it's, actually makes the deck very charming. Here's the Hermit. Hmm. The Hermit is facing to the right as opposed to the left. Um, the Hermit for me has always been very significant. And I want to say across the board they're usually facing to the left um in all the traditions that i'm aware of. well maybe not both but i know right right away and marseille for sure um so this is interesting and and i think the reason why is like one of the definitions that i use for the hermit is father time and or wisdom and the thing about wisdom is it comes with experience it comes with time um and so the only way that you have that wisdom is to have that retrospection to look back you know as to where you came from the journey you came from um but at the same time i think this is a little bit liberating in a way because even though there's wisdom and there's um you know, you carry, you still carry that forward with you. It's important to carry it forward with you and not to get stuck, just always reflecting back on it. So I, I really actually like this. I don't know, I may have a new, a new best friend here. Here we have the hangman. Um, so again, unique structure, uh, unique things here. This is the way it's supposed to be. It's quirky. You can see his fingers in the background there. Um, very interesting to see the hanged man not actually be upside down when the card is upright. It's a little, that's a little confusing to say, but I think most of you guys watching my channel would understand what I'm talking about. Very interesting. This is such a unique deck, I will say that. Here is our friendly Reaper. Hello, Scorpio season. Um, I like, oh, I really actually love this death card. Oh my goodness. What I really like about it is you can see the skeletal structure. The blacks are like really black. The black outlines are really black and his face has this decomposing type of, of quality to it where you see the skull but you see the flesh color as well 
Um, and there's a lot going on in the ground. There's heads buried, there's hands sticking up from the ground. This is, that's, that's a great, that's a great card. I like that. We have Temperance. And there's the two canisters right there. Wicked Devil card. He has the beast in the belly. He's not face forward, which is in most cases he's facing forward. He has like the two little, you know, you could call them people. You could call them um, demon, demon, demons, whatever you want to call them. Um, but there's not that here, except there's faces in his knees. There's a, there's a beast, a uh, face in the belly, excuse me, which I like to call the belly of the beast. Very this is very interesting. I wonder what kind of readings I would get from this one. So here is the tower. Um, I know Patrick Valenza in his Triumphi de la Luna. In some of the extra cards, he has the, the lightning as opposed to the tower. You could, you know, switch either one out. He has like a traditional one or not. So this is very interesting for the tower. Um, this would always catch me off guard if I were to pull this in a, in a reading with this deck. I mean, I could get used to it, but you don't actually see the lightning. It looks more like, like sun ray, sun rays or something coming down from them. Oh, I need to study this guy. This is the star. So this one was always very, I think this is the card that made me kind of go, Yes, no, do I want this deck? Do I not want this deck? I'm so used to seeing the woman pouring the jugs, um, you know, with this with the stars in the sky. Whereas this one um depicts basically an astrologer looking up to the sky. And but there's something very charming about that as well. Like forget about the water, forget, you know, sometimes you you know, when in life are we, at, well, I gotta say this now, cause I live in the Midwest, but no, when I was in Florida, I was totally like the star, like in the bathing suit, chilling in the beach or the whatever, and I'm looking up at the sky constantly. Um, but there's another part of society that doesn't have access to bodies of water like that. And so many times I will sit in the backyard, I will sit outside um, and just look at the, at the stars. And I would still get hope from looking at the sea of vastness which is the sky and the universe as opposed to um, the whole like water element. You know what I mean? Um, with it being also correspondent to the sign of Aquarius, I have to give it to this deck for just kind of doing something a little bit different with this particular, uh, you know, major arcana card. So I like it it makes sense to me and if I were to pull it for myself I feel like I would need to like pull my transits for the day or <laughs> check what's going on is mercury about to go in retrograde do do I have some kind of like major transit getting ready to happen that I need to be aware of and prepare for you know things like that so I, I like seeing this card in this way um So there's the moon, there's the sun. Very similar um, in structure, the people, the, 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 the figures are facing up. This sun looks super mean, okay? I'm not even gonna lie, that face is killing me right now. It's just like, what? The face is going, what'd you say to me? <laughs> um, and the moon, I don't know if you guys can see that so well. I'm not sure what that face is with the moon. I don't know if it's kind of like, meh, whatever, I'm here. But I, I do find it interesting that, like the use of colors, like you see, there's like this gray on this horse or whatever, and there's gray in the moon, but instead of these rays, these moon rays being maybe gray and gold or gray, and like clear, you know what I mean? They're red and yellow, 
which I mean, it technically makes sense because the moon is a reflection of the sunlight, but that's not the color that it emulates when you see it being full. So anyway, I'm being a little bit picky here and talking a lot of crap, but very interesting this um, parallel that these two cards have. Here we have judgment. All right. And the world. So the legs not crossed, but everything is there. So very interesting um, journey through the majors. Um, and I am going to quickly go through the minors okay i'm not gonna super study them all but the book did say something about the you know it not being sterile so we'll see so classic so there's a lot of foliage happening but i think most decks have a lot going on in the minors, it's just a matter of finding how it speaks to you as opposed to, I don't know what they mean about modern decks being stripped down. I, I really don't. I don't get, I don't understand that. Um, I think typically these coins are on this side. So there is a lot of um, like this flip flop of what's on the left and what's on the right with this deck. So I think it would be good for change in perspective every now and then. The queen, the king. Everything's off center. It makes it feel very organic. The cardstock feels good. Obviously you can see it's a little, it's not matte, it's a little bit shiny, but it's not like overtly glossy. You know what I mean? Very beautiful. The faces are very quirky in this deck. I actually uh, feel like I could get used to them and I'd be able to tell stories. I really love, for whatever reason, I really love this queen of cups i don't know what it is it might it may have something to do with the fact that it looks like there's a shadow right here but it, it i don't know it's meant to color her hair but it colors her face a little bit but it looks like a shadow you know yeah how quirky and cool well i'm not mad that i finally got this deck in my collection i feel like I feel like I'll get some good use out of this when I'm feeling like maybe an off day or an exploratory day. This horse is out of control. Oh, I'm sorry. This horse is out of control. Queen of Wands. Okay. I'm sorry, this King of Wands looks like he has a Napoleon complex. I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't. Oh. So, all right, my friends, we are pulling up to the end of this. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. I know it's, you know, not the latest or the newest, but this is something I've acquired recently on my collection um, that I'm excited about, you know? And I'm actually, now that I have it in my hand, I really do feel like I can work with this deck and, um, there's something very uh, unique and charming about it that makes me want to use it. You don't really see that many people using this deck. I think people um, get this deck to just collect it. And I've seen on very rare occasions folks using it. You know what I mean? So anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope to... I hope this interests some of you guys and I will talk to you on the next one. Much love, many blessings, peace.